Okay, in this video we're going to see what improvements we can make to this uh, zero force motor. Standard configuration at the moment. Um, little LED burning off the uh, inductive kickback spikes. And um, what we have done now is started recording what we have. Now I've got five volts coming from my power supply, but I'm going by the voltage across the coil due to the loss through the reed switch here um, and that is very close to 4.2 volts across the coil once the reed switch comes on so that is the voltage we will use so we got 4.2 volts at 137 milliamps um, our pulses per minute 2475 we divide that by 4 and that gives us our RPM so uh, what we do is we're coming from our power supply going through our amp meter here and into this large cap and then from that cap we're going down through our reed switch and the system so this uh, stabilizes our average current so um, it's pretty much the same as it was without that cap so once again shows us our meter is doing a pretty good job at averaging the pulse current. So improvements, what we're going to do first up, um, none of this I've tried yet, we're doing it on the fly. So I'm simply going to remove our LED and replace it with a standard diode and uh, see what happens. So rather than burning any of the uh, inductive kickback power off, we're simply going to send it back through the coils and uh, make ourselves a current loop so um, we can do that now I guess that's the good thing about resistors we can disconnect the uh, load that's taken a flyback and not toast our resistors so uh, okay so now you see we've killed inductive kickback spike that was down here driving the LED and you can actually see it being sent back to our uh, sent back through our coils every now and then okay so our maybe a little motor here is basically using the same amount of power as it was before. Let's check our uh, PPM. So that's about two thousand four hundred and eighty. We're at 2,175, so um, as we have four magnets, it's only just increased by one RPM. Uh, so really our diode is doing nothing, and it would seem in this case at the moment that we can, um, what we will do is just leave the coils open for the time being, see what happens. So I am seeing a uh, slight current reduction. And you can see the very large inductive kickback spikes all over the joint now. And now at 10 volts per division. Peak to peak. So we dropped uh, three odd milliamps. Check our RPM again. The RPM has actually dropped as well. So 
So, um, having our little LED, um, of course is a diode, so whatever the LED does not consume or dissipate um, power in the form of light is simply once again being looped back through the system. So, um, looks like the LED and the diode really make no difference at all. We disconnected the LED and uh, did indeed drop current draw but we also dropped RPM um, and that can work in all sorts of different ways because the RPM is slower, the read switch will be on longer. Um, but it's also a longer time between the red switch being on so everything sort of comes out in the wash as being even. Alright, so that didn't make any difference really. Um, we know putting it here and working in the opposite uh, kind of configuration where we have a push-pull on all the magnets um, is much better. So I guess the next thing we're going to do is we'll leave it in this configuration and this is a very good opportunity to see um, air core versus um, iron core coils. What I'm going to do is because my core formers are hollow, I'm going to drill a hole in here and we're going to fill those cores up with cast iron powder and then we're going to leave this exactly as it is, um, come back, give it another spin up and see what happens. So we'll be back when that's done. Okay, so our cores are now choco full of our cast iron filings, which is this stuff here. And if you want some of this, just go down to your local auto repair shop that does brakes, and you will probably be able to get a load of that from their uh, brake disc machining apparatus. So we just drilled a couple of holes in the end of our cores, filled them up, packed it in there as tight as I could get it um, using a small rod uh, without breaking anything and then we sealed the holes up just with some uh, hot glue and as you can see our magnets now want to stick to the middle of the cores and of course they are very magnetic Alright, so that's all we've done. We've changed nothing else. Everything else is the same. Um, we'll be running at our same 5 volts. And all we're going to do now is hook up the power, switch it on, give it a little touch and see what happens. And it's not looking very good at all. Back spice spikes are definitely a lot higher, but um, nothing else is happening here. Does not want to run. All right, so what we're going to do now that we know that was an epic fail. We'll put this back over here. There it was. We got it to run better last time. We'll hook our power back up and see what happens this direction. So inductive kickback, that LED is going to explode. Um, 
I'm just going to stop that actually. I'm going to find a heavier load for our LED, so I'll back shortly. Okay, so we have to have the reed switch placed as such to get this thing to work. And we'll just put this LED board on here because uh, my little LED was definitely going to blow out way too much voltage across it. Uh, let's have a look here. Still have about the same voltage across the coil, that being about 4.2 volts. They're drawing more current. Looking at that, I can safely say we're definitely doing less RPM. Two, three pulses per minute. Um, so it would seem in this configuration that the um, steel core is not so good or having a uh, iron powered core is not so good I just can't seem to make it go any better than that regardless of the position we get this thing to fire up so um, extremely heavy on current very slow long time to build up speed which means it has very little torque but the inductive kickback went up now if I disconnect our power in that position we are producing an EMF as you can see that's dying very fast because the rotor is slowing down very quickly so um, definitely a negative effect on this motor filling the cores up with iron powder so not so good all right um, next video I'm pull these plugs out empty all that iron out I'm going to switch over to a uh, transistor driven system get some uh, decent current flowing through those coils see how fast we can make this thing go cheers guys well after much thought trying transistors and that on here give them a quick shot um, really didn't increase the efficiency sure we can get it to spin much faster be a little more powerful but of course takes a lot more power to do so so um, I think I'm with lid motor on this one in that uh, this is about as far as I'm going with it I'm going to rip these coils apart and salvage more wire back uh, this rotor we may be able to use for something one day um, stock standard pulse motor or something like that but um, as far as this one goes well, definitely not my cup of tea. Seem to be very inefficient. Uh, so that's it for that one. Uh, shelving it once I reclaim my wire, and then we're going to move on to what we're going to call the Fano Pulse. This is an old motor out of an old cheapo fan. Uh, have our little oscillator motor gearbox combo there that. Um, might make a nice hand crank torch or something like that but uh, gonna see if we can turn this fan motor into a um, pulse motor of some description so uh, stay tuned for the next video where we'll get stuck into that alright thanks for watching and um, till then cheers and have a great day